This is the closest I can come to a tin foil hat for this particular video. If you thought the pandemic caused an inconvenience for a lot of people, things will get grimmer as time goes on. Now, many people felt that remote learning isolated children, robbing them of the social development they so desperately need at this time in their lives. Honestly, are our students developing or going through some sort of regression right now? I don't know, you tell me, you answer that question. There are those who see our beloved John Dewey structured school system as a mirror indoctrination camp that children just pass on through, going in as free thinking individuals only to emerge as mindless sheep deluded by the wolves teaching them. Now, surprisingly enough, I beg to differ on this notion. There are some really wonderful teachers out there making the most of the public education situation, striving off for students the best education as possible despite all the odds. From the standardized testing to the scripted lessons, teachers have to work within these mandated parameters. Now, while there are teachers out there that are more than happy to not only push agendas, but add their own narratives to the mix, other teachers really just wanna teach kids how to read, write, add, and subtract effectively. It really is about bestowing skills upon the children. I always say this, it may not be the most ideal education, but it's an education nonetheless. But with these strenuous obstacles pushing more teachers out, there won't be enough qualified people sticking around to make sure your child is literate and mathematically inclined. Here are my predictions, no matter how grim they are, on why we will eventually return to remote learning permanently. Let's go. First is student behavior. While I don't believe there, this will be a direct cause, it will serve as a catalyst igniting other problems that will snowball us away from in-person learning. And frankly, students are not built the same as they actually once were. Blame technology, blame social media, whatever you need to do, they, they're just not the same as kids in the past. A quick search on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and you will quickly find the surplus of videos showcasing students cursing teachers out and boldly laying hands on them. I'll talk about that more in my seven frustrations videos if you have not already seen that video on my library. And unfortunately, due to the graphic nature of those certain clips, I cannot show them here as B-roll on this video. But it's not just the behavior on its own frustrating the heck out of adults, but it's the mismanagement of that reckless behavior. Teachers are tired of having to wear multiple hats to work with little Johnny terrorizing the school while productive students suffer for the lack of attention. And I'm sorry, differentiation and scaffolding just isn't enough, it's, it's not gonna cut it. When little Johnny is finally sent out to the class and he returns seven times more deadlier than the first, happily licking his ice cream from a waffle cone going, I'm back. <laughs> Behavioral students returning in this fashion only communicates a lack of support and trust to teachers that is already eroding between staff. You may be shocked by this, but one of the benefits I enjoyed about remote learning was that it eliminated all those classroom hijinks that can occur on any given class day. I mean, no longer did I have to deal with class clowns, brazen disrespect, none of that, having to do remote learning. Actually, I think you get more control just through the technology on just cutting somebody off and doing the documentation as needed. I think it's an easy fix for legislation to put in place that reinforces students to appear on camera as some sort of requirement. For those who do not have the financial means to accommodate the technology requirements for school, something will be worked out as it always does. But again, these are predictions, so I may or may not have the solutions for the problems presented on this list. but. I wanted to give something nonetheless based on the clues that are being left behind today. This next one is a doozy and it may be personal to some of you guys, but it's going to be the political climate, excuse me, it's going to be the political climate that is going to cause a change for us to have to return back to remote learning. Let me explain. What we see today is less skills taught in classrooms and more social engineering to fit ideas being taken place. Now we have a lot of left-leaning teachers on TikTok proudly announcing that they're trying to teach their ideology to students, math and reading skills and other things be damned. Poor parents are being accused of terrorism just because they don't want their students reading material that's promiscuously inappropriate for their kids. And that's completely understandable. I have young children. The push for forced diversity and cultural learning because it appears to be agenda driven is causing parents to quickly remove their kids from public education, taking them elsewhere. Most of these extremes I see from the left side of the political sphere as they are hard pressed to control media narratives that will change the minds of many. Though from the right, 
I see very little in the way of action and all talk as these types of schools continue to move forward with their agendas. But you know who will take action? Parents who are fed up. And my prediction is if schools begin to lose their student population and home training, they will not have enough funding to stay open, which will give partial reason to usher in a complete remote learning system. Next on this list may be a little bit more frightening to most, but it's going to be the economic energy and food concerns that are constantly being pumped and dumped into the internet sphere. With the rise of emotional concerns for weather crisis and our inevitability of a severe financial downturn to the point of a new depression, the media is constantly sending us like these subtle messages of prepare to stay at home part two. If we go into some sort of economic crash, I believe schools will not be able to afford daily meals for their students, especially for Title I locations. There's no shortage of YouTube videos discussing upcoming food shortages that will leave parents paranoid and schools scrambling to stay safe because of the dystopia future we just entered in. Honestly, I don't know what the extent of these crises will be if and when they occur. In regards to energy, the argument for a remote learning environment is mute if the electricity, gas, and more becomes a bigger issue. Education in this case will be the furthest thing from anyone's mind. Grappling to live with the new normal again will be at the forefront with no hesitation. But let's stay in the realm of a financial crisis. At the time of this recording, gas is low, but it will rise again and diesel is already questionable with headlines stating that we only have about 25 days left of reserves. I heard media outlets bring up the phrase financial lockdown, meaning people will be too broke to consistently keep up with the daily routines because of inflation pricing out the average consumer. Now, if families and schools cannot afford to travel, then they will try to find alternatives for education, especially with the new complaints of carbon emissions and reducing our carbon footprints. And people will drink the fear Kool-Aid from up top and lock themselves in for the greater good of the environment. We've seen the hypnotizing happen in 2020 and we will see it again in the near future. One thing I learned from C19 is that everything affects everything and we are more dependent on each other than we give ourselves credit for. I mean, come on, there is no such thing as strong and independent. It's more so of, I cannot live without you. Here's a good example, case in point. During 2020, when my daycare had to shut down, then that shut me down from going to work, which that then affected the classroom environment because I wasn't there to teach, nor were there any subs available who are, you guessed it, your standard employees. To an extent, I think employee shortages are worse than teacher shortages because you have to factor in your support staff, such as bus drivers, cafeteria workers, custodians, etc. And if you don't have these people, then you don't have a school that can run as optimally as it should. When I took a year off in 2019 to work for a science company, I was in charge of interviews and bringing new employees in. And the problem that I found out was that people did not want to work. They, they did not want to come and make any sort of wage below what they was getting at the time. Speaking of at that time, it was for good reason. During my second half of that, my employment there in 2020, the government supplied unemployment income to the masses, which was more than what some people were making at their companies. Now, fast forward today and what's the excuse? Oh, I wanna make money online. I'm trying to earn passive income. I come across so many people who live in this fantasy realm that they will be like this overnight internet sensation floating in the millionaire dough in no time. And these people want to work from home with no boss, but fail to realize that their children will now replace them as their nine to five overlords. If places such as daycares, for example, are not in operation to support parents who depend on them so they can do their job, then nobody will be able to work. And there are some of y'all that are vehemently against daycares, but let's be honest, how do you feel about your school today? Besides employee shortages, we now have teacher shortages, which is probably the more obvious one on this list. I believe this is going to be the educational system killer within the next five years. Now, it's no secret that teachers are leaving in droves. Schools can't find enough teachers in 2022 alone opting to hire Sarah from Starbucks or Don or Oil Change Walmart Tech to teach your child. It's so bad, you even have students being concerned about classroom emptiness, posting it on social media themselves. No, I'm just walking to class, don't mind the shoes, man. Just, just to go into an empty class with no teacher. Like, this gotta stop, bro. And if we do not have enough professionals, and I mean people actually trained to teach, going through testing, mock classroom experience, etc., then parents will find their kids with them trying to figure out where their children should go to receive a good education. 
From my perspective, us not having enough teachers is sad, but also a selfish area because the more fortunate is going to expect someone to teach their child. You'll find an abundance of information online about companies getting ready to lay people off or already laid some people off, but in education, the job market is wide open. You can actually go on any sort of district website or any regional website for that school system to actually see a whole list and litany of positions that are available. Unfortunately, a recession may be the elixir to cure these vacancy woes L in the pub at sector because if people can't find jobs or feed their families, they'll remember what it's like just to be happy to have a job. Or maybe not. Maybe they'll turn to the internet before running back to the classroom. All these former teachers who think they will have a, a market to sell to will be in disarray when they find out their market is dried up. For example, teachers who sell when teachers pay teachers are expecting teachers that's still in the classroom to have a market to sell to, but as shortages increase, sales on this site will be decreasing. Mark my word. While I'm not trying to scare anybody that's, that is a seller on TPT, because I happen to be a seller myself, how can we realistically expect there to be other teachers if like i said if you're expecting starbucks sarah to be on there she may make some desperate purchases because she may not know how to actually run a classroom for lack of training but those desperate purchases those paranoid purchases aren't going to sustain you in the long run i talk extensively about the effects of teacher shortages on the educational free market and what that means for bright-eyed bushy-tailed tpt teacherpreneurs who think they have an unlimited customer supply right here in this video